let the magic begin. Hi everyone, Nikki Mar here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now if you are a fan of Disney at all, then you have undeniably heard of the Disney Princess brand. The Disney Princess brand is a very elite and selective group of female characters from Disney movies that have been branded together into one group to represent the title of Disney Princess. And today, being the massive Disney adult and Disney insane person, of the internet, I am going to be ranking every single Disney princess. If you are excited for today's video, and if you just enjoy consuming Disney content in general, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, because at this point I am coming out every week with a brand new video. And if your favorite princess ends up on a spot that you're happy with, make sure to hit that like button. Now because many of you may know my top Disney princesses already, I'm going to be starting today with the best Disney princesses, in my opinion, and then moving down to the list to my least favorite amongst the princesses. To shake things up, I am also going to be covering a certain list of criteria for each princess. Certain touch points that I want to make sure to hit with everybody. Those topics are the best and worst thing about the princess, the Disney princesses voice actress or actresses, I'm going to be going over their performance of the character, the Disney princesses song or songs, again only from the original animated films, we're not going to go into Broadway or sequels or any live action songs. We will be going over the fashion of course, the iconic Disney princess dress, and last but not least we are going to be going over the Disney princesses park presence. How easy is it to meet this Disney princess when you go to Walt Disney World? Now that we have all of that out of the way, I'm going to briefly go over some disclaimers and some conditions for today's list, but if you just want to jump right into the ranking, then you can jump to this timestamp. First and foremost, I have no professional affiliation with Disney. I do not speak for the company or the brand. These are all just my opinions. And secondly, if I list a princess that you really, really love super low on my list, that is totally okay. This list is just my opinion. And if anything, I encourage you to leave your thoughts down below. I love talking to people about Disney and Disney characters because I feel like that's what makes us all individual and special. We all gravitate towards something different and that is perfect and beautiful. All right, now for the conditions. The list of princesses that I will be going through today are the 13 official Disney princesses. For the full catalog of all 13 princesses, you can check out princess.disney.com. That's their official site where you can log on, click on their picture, and read a little bit about what that character is all about. Now, the second condition of today's list is that I will also be including the two Frozen Queens. This is a largely debated topic amongst the Disney community because technically Anna and Elsa are not official members of the Disney Princess brand. And many believe that that decision was made because Frozen was such a big phenomenon that the numbers that Anna and Elsa were raking in were far exceeding the other princesses. And so Disney didn't necessarily want to lump them all together. However, if you've seen the movie Ralph Breaks the Internet, there is a fun little scene in there that shows all of the Disney princesses sort of hanging out and enjoying time together. And Anna and Elsa are also there. And in my opinion, they just really, really fit the criteria to be Disney princesses. So if you don't agree with me and think that Anna and Elsa should be separate from the Disney princess brand, then you can just go ahead and skip right over their sections today. And with all of that, it is officially time to get started on today's list. At number one, my number one favorite Disney princess, the one that beats out every other one, Ariel. This one should not come as a surprise to all of you. I talk about this in almost every piece of media that I put out ever. Ariel has always been my favorite Disney princess. She probably will always be my favorite Disney princess. And that's just because I find her absolutely magnetic. I think she is a wonderfully rounded out character with a lot of depth and just an incredible performance. So let's go through all of the criteria. The best thing about Ariel is that she is extremely successful in getting audiences invested in her. At the very beginning of her movie, she is so enamored with the human world, and the character delivers the song Part of Your World, which is a very clear example of Disney's I Want song. Basically, the song where the leading lady will sit down on something and sing about what she wants. After doing this, she then goes after that dream with everything in her. She's willing to risk certain things in order to get where she wants to go. Now, that leads us to the worst thing about this princess. Ariel is often labeled as reckless because she gives up a lot to get what she wants. Your voice is a really big price to pay for anything. So while yes, she can be impulsive, in the end, it really works out for her. If she had never risked her voice, then she wouldn't be on land with the man she loves. 
Next, moving on to the voice. Ariel was voiced by actress Jodie Benson. And let me just say, this performance is by far my favorite out of any Disney princess. Jodie Benson to this day still holds the spirit of Ariel. She travels the country and does a lot of different expos and fan meet and greets. And she's just so engaged with the brand Disney and really keeps up with character integrity. Jodie Benson gets the gold star and my favorite voice of a Disney princess. Next, we're moving on to the song. Ariel's song, Part of Your World, is by far my favorite Disney princess song. I love this song. I think it is so well written by Howard Ashman and Alan Menken. It perfectly lines up everything that Ariel wants, everything that she feels, and not to mention it's also animated beautifully. Now, moving on to a relatively interesting topic with this princess, the dress. While Ariel is my favorite princess, she by far has my least favorite wardrobe out of almost any Disney princess. In my opinion, Ariel's best look, unfortunately, is her mermaid form, which is of course not the form that she identifies with. She wants to be a human. Now in terms of her human looks, the only really moments of fashion that I really love from Ariel are the wedding dress, which of course was modeled after the 80s, 90s Princess Diana wedding dress. And I actually really like her purple sparkly dress that she wears as she emerges from the sea. And I know this dress is so completely 90s, but I kind of love it. <laughs> I am not really a huge fan of the pink dress or the blue dress, but I will say, and this is probably my most controversial opinion when it comes to Ariel, the teal dress that Disney created for Ariel that does not exist within her movie and only exists in the princess brand, I really love it. I really, really, really love it. I know a lot of people are against it because it wasn't in the original movie and I get it, I do get it. I just think it looks so beautiful on her and in my opinion, it's like the perfect representation of her mermaid form translated to her human form. And finally, her park presence. She has her set location in Ariel's Grotto, and she is also able to be seen in the Festival of Fantasy Parade. And the other exciting thing is later this year, over in Disney's Hollywood Studios, there's gonna be a brand new Little Mermaid show that opens up where Voyage of the Little Mermaid used to be. So Ariel's gonna get represented in two parks out of the four. And with that, we wrap up my favorite Disney princess. Moving on to princess number two. Now, if you saw my last video where I ranked every single Disney movie, you'll know the answer to this one as well. But coming in at number two is Princess Tiana. Now, Princess Tiana from The Princess and the Frog is an absolutely incredible Disney princess. She is the last 2D animated princess. She is the first princess to ever have a job. And in terms of historical timeline where different movies fall in history, hers is the most recent to us, taking place in the 1920s. Now moving on to the criteria. The best thing about this Disney princess is her resilience. Tiana is one of the strongest princesses out of all of them. Tiana faces so many obstacles in her movie and yet she's able to overcome all of them and still keep that childlike wonder in her heart. And it's extremely special to see her overcoming these. Now the worst thing about Tiana is that she spends the majority of her movie as a frog. Tiana is an absolutely gorgeous Disney princess and the only thing I can say is that I wish we got to see her more in her human form throughout her entire movie. But the good thing is in all other media in the Disney parks and even in the upcoming series that is coming to Disney Plus, we are going to be seeing Tiana a lot more in her human form. Oh, and in Tiana's Bayou Adventure coming this summer to the Walt Disney World Resort. Now moving on to the voice, Tiana is brilliantly voice acted by actress Onika Nani Rose. Much like Jodie Benson, Onikanani Rose is also heavily involved with Princess Tiana, often heavily advocating for the character, and also coming back to voice her in any iteration of the character that comes up in the future. Onikanani Rose has a killer voice, and I love not only the moments of acting, but also the moments of singing. Tiana is a fierce belter, and I am here for it. Moving on to the song. Now, when I think of Princess and the Frog and Princess Tiana, you can't help but not think of Almost There. Almost There is so wonderful. I love the song so much. It perfectly outlines Tiana's feeling of almost reaching her goal, and by the end, she does. But in that moment, she's still at that state of being almost there. I also absolutely love how this was animated in like a very specific 2D style that is different from the rest of the movie. It very much gives off almost a dream sequence sort of vibe. And the cool thing is in this dream sequence, she wears this like white flapper dress and that has also been translated to the Disney parks. Now moving on to the dress. I think Tiana's green dress 
is by far the best Disney princess dress. Green is absolutely Tiana's color, and this dress is so beautiful and ornate, and it perfectly shows how nature is like encapsulated in her identity because she spent so much time in the bayou as a frog. I just absolutely love it. And the crown, oh, this is my favorite Disney princess look by far. Now the park presence. Tiana is of course available to meet in the Disney princess fairy tale hall. She is also, of course, in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade in the first segment. She also sometimes makes appearances in Disney's Hollywood Studios with Prince Naveen, just outside of the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, right near the Muppets. What's so fun is that I feel like Tiana's gonna get much more of a park presence, even more than she already has, because of Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening up this summer. And I am so excited to see more Princess Tiana. I can't get enough of her. I absolutely love her. All right, and with that, we are moving on to princess number three. Elsa. Now, a lot of people come at Elsa for not being an interesting character. I always combat that with saying that Elsa is just an introverted character. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to be introverted, especially when the majority of the Disney princess brand consists of very extroverted characters. A lot of princesses find it very easy to make friends along their journey, often having people root for them in their lives and helping them to get where they want to go. But Elsa really doesn't have that. In the first movie, pretty much everybody except her sister is against her. And Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven, of course. Elsa also holds the title of really being the only Disney princess that is, in a way, seen as evil. When her ice magic is revealed to the kingdom, a lot of people rear back in fear. This is a reaction to a princess that we've never seen before. And I just think it makes her extremely special, especially with her big character arc. Now, the best thing about Elsa has to be her voice. She has some of the best Disney princess songs of all time. They're ones where you hear them and then you just can't help but sing along and belt at the top of your range. And they're fun to sing, not only from Frozen 1, but also Frozen 2. She gets not one, but two songs in Frozen 2. And the worst thing about this princess, I would say, is that we don't get to see a whole lot of her in her first movie. Frozen 2, of course, is a lot more centered around Elsa, but in the first movie, she's sort of more mysterious. Now, moving on to the voice, of course, Queen Elsa is voiced by the iconic Adina Menzel. She is, of course, famous for being the original Elphaba in Wicked on Broadway, amongst many, many other stage productions and films. <laughs> and she's also in the Disney movie Enchanted as Nancy. Adina Menzel's voice in these films is absolutely phenomenal. She is such a powerhouse and she sings these songs like rent is due. <laughs> what I love about her performance of this character, not only for singing but also acting, is that she just leaves her entire soul out into this character. And she's not really afraid to draw on the comparisons between Elphaba and Elsa. Now moving on to the song, when we think of the song and we think of Elsa, we of course think of Let It Go. Let It Go was an absolute phenomenon. When this movie came out, you could not escape this song. It was everywhere. And of course, it's still just as iconic today as it was when it came out. But even better, in the second Frozen film, we got Into the Unknown and Show Yourself. These are two songs that not only show Elsa's extremely powerful voice, but that expand upon her story. All three of these songs are just absolutely beautiful, and I am so happy that they exist so that I can live out my theater kid fantasy in my room. <laughs> As for the dress, Elsa, of course, has many iconic looks, but probably two of my favorites are the ice dress from Frozen 1 and the Snow Queen dress from Frozen 2. And in terms of park presence, she is readily available to be met at the Norway Pavilion in Epcot, and she also appears in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade alongside her sister. Moving on to princess number four, one that I don't think a lot of people will agree with me on the placement of, but again, this is just my opinion. At number four is Princess Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. Now, you might be thinking, what is Princess Aurora doing here? She is not really in her film. Even though the film's named after her, she's not really the main character. But what I love about Princess Aurora more than anything is that she has 18 minutes of screen time and 18 spoken lines. Even with so little material, she is still a member of the Disney princess brand, making her one of Disney's most popular characters. Now, the best thing about Princess Aurora by far is her voice. We will get into voice actress in just a moment. Aurora's voice is so incredibly special, and it's very clear as to why Prince Philip hears her in the forest and can't help but try to find her. And the worst thing about this princess is that she has so little screen time. <laughs> also, not my favorite thing that she doesn't have a lot of agency over her story. The three good 
good fairies really are what the driving force behind this story is, and they do a great job of protecting her and making sure she's safe. But yeah, I just would like to see more Aurora. Now moving on to the voice, Aurora is perfectly performed by singer Mary Costa. Mary Costa was an opera singer who was brought in by Walt Disney to perform the role of Princess Aurora. Now the stories about Mary Costa and how she got into the role of Princess Aurora are some of my favorite. Mary Costa originally had a little bit of a southern drawl, and so she had to lose that and transform it into a transatlantic accent, which was popular amongst the princesses at the time, much like Cinderella. But the two voice acting stories that I absolutely love about Mary Costa were that Walt Disney told her when performing Princess Aurora, I want you to paint with your voice. I think that is just absolutely fantastic. And she is successful at it too. If you're not watching the movie and just listening to the recording, you still get this rich, beautiful work of art. And it's incredible, especially when paired with the animation. My other favorite story behind Mary Costa is that she approached some of the animators and asked them, what would Aurora be feeling in these scenes in the woods? And the animators responded, Imagine that the woods are embracing her. And I think that just absolutely translates perfectly in Mary Costa's voice performance of the character. Now we are moving on to the song. The iconic song of Princess Aurora is Once Upon a Dream, which of course she shares with Prince Philip. I absolutely love the song. It is my favorite duet between a prince and a princess. I just think there's such a magical sound to the entire thing. The orchestrations and also the performances by Mary Costa and Bill Shirley. This song is just beautiful, and the animation that accompanies it is just as incredible. As for her dress, I love Princess Aurora's dress. Pink is one of my favorite colors, and so I really do prefer her in the pink dress. Although I would be lying if I said that I didn't like the blue dress as well. I think she looks absolutely wonderful in both dresses. And as for her park presence, Aurora is available to meet at both the Princess Fairy Tale Hall in Magic Kingdom and also in the France pavilion at Epcot. She is also in two out of four Disney parks. Way to go, girl. And all that with 18 minutes of screen time. <laughs> Moving on to princess number five, Moana. I love Moana so, so, so much. I love how strong she is and just being one girl against nature and the entire ocean, and she's able to overcome it. And also, not even to mention, she measures up to a lot of powerful deities in her story. Now, I would say the best thing about this princess is her resilience. Well, yes, yeah, she does have moments of grief and feeling the weight of the journey that she has to take on her. But no matter how much that weighs on her, she's still able to stand up and power through the rest of it. And that is extremely evident in Grandma Tala's line, sometimes the world feels against you. I feel like Moana experiences that quite a bit in her story, and yet she's still able to overcome. And the worst thing about this princess? I don't know. I don't think I really have anything. Oh, I guess that she eats pork when her best friend is a pig. Eh, but who's to say she still does that, right? Now, moving on to the voice. Moana is, of course, voice acted by Ali'i Cravalho. In case you didn't know, Ali'i was actually one of the last actresses to ever audition for the role of Moana, and out of all of them, she was selected. For being a relatively unknown before cast in a Disney movie, she is perfect for this role. She has an absolute killer singing voice, and you can really hear the emotional depth in her performance in all of the emotional scenes. Moving on to the song, of course, Moana's famous song is How Far I'll Go, and I love this song so much. It has such a fun beat and really creative lyrics. And again, the animation that accompanies it is really awesome because we get to see Moana literally travel around Motunui and interacting with her village as she's singing this internal monologue. As for the dress, I love Moana's dress. I think she looks absolutely gorgeous. The one thing I will say is I wish that her official princess look was actually the look she has on at the very end of her movie where she's decked out in all of these flowers. I think it's just a little bit more ornate and I think it would have been really, really cool to have as her iconic princess look. And as for her park presence, Moana is available to meet and greet not only in Epcot, where she is stationed right next to Moana Journey of Water, but also over in Animal Kingdom at the Character Landing. Again, another Disney princess that can meet in two out of the four theme parks. And with that, we move on to princess number six on my list of favorites, Snow White. The one that started them all, we gotta have respect for this one because none of the other princesses would exist without her. And on that topic, actually the entire Disney company wouldn't exist if Snow White had failed at the box office. We owe a lot to this little princess. 
Now, as for the best thing about Snow White is that she is the human embodiment of kindness and goodness. She constantly has this childlike wonder and it really translates when a lot of the other characters want to step in and help her. Like, you understand why you would want to help this adorable 14-year-old girl. She's just so sweet and kind and that is such a wonderful trait to have. Now, the worst thing about her is that she's a little bit too trusting. As we see, she is tricked by the evil queen who gives her a poisoned apple, which causes her to fall into a deep sleep. I think if Snow White is a little bit more cautious in the future, then she will be just fine. Now, as for the voice, Snow White was voiced by actress Adriana Casalotti. And there's actually a really funny story as to how Adriana got the role. Adriana's father was actually a casting director and was on the phone with Walt Disney when Adriana actually came in and interrupted the phone call. Walt heard her voice and the rest is history. As for her song, Snow White actually has a couple songs in her movie. My favorite being Someday My Prince Will Come. We also can't forget Whistle While You Work, With a Smile and a Song, and I'm Wishing. As for her dress, I love Snow White's dress because it's the three primary colors. Snow White's dress is really the only Disney princess dress that doesn't have one distinct color. You can pretty much look at any princess dress and pick out one specific color, but with Snow White she has a perfect combination of the three primary colors. As for her park presence, she is in the Festival of Fantasy Parade, she is sometimes available to meet in the Princess Fairy Tale Hall, and she is also available to meet in the Germany Pavilion at Epcot. Snow White is sometimes also available to meet outside the Town Square Theater on the Little Veranda. Princess number seven is Belle. Now I love Belle so much, coming from one of my favorite Disney films. How can you not love this little bookworm? Now, as for the best thing about Belle is that she is ahead of her time. She seemingly doesn't care what anybody else thinks, and she is going to do exactly what she wants to do, which is dream of these faraway adventures, and also protect the ones that she loves, going after her father and taking his place at the Beast's Castle. Now, the worst thing I would say about Belle is that in all honesty, she isn't the Disney princess with the biggest character arc. She seemingly starts out her movie the same way that she ends it, but just going on this journey. Not really changing so much as journeying. As for the voice, Belle is of course voiced by Paige O'Hara, who is still heavily involved with the Disney brand, but now as a Disney artist. As for Belle's songs, she's not so much a princess with a lot of solos as one that is featured in a lot of ensemble songs. For example, she's in Belle, she's in Something There. Really the only one she has by herself is Belle Reprise, where she's singing in the giant field. But regardless, Belle's voice is absolutely gorgeous. Now her dress. Belle has probably my second favorite princess dress. Her gold dress is absolutely gorgeous. It just perfectly rounds out her look. You just really can't imagine Belle in any other dress other than the one she wears in her movie. And as for park presence, she is in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade, can sometimes be met at the Princess Fairy Tale Hall, and she also meets in the France Pavilion at Epcot. Yet another Disney princess that is featured in two out of four Disney parks. Moving on to princess number eight is Mulan. Now, I absolutely love Mulan. She is such a strong character and really the standout of her movie. She is extremely brave and very adaptable to her surroundings. While not the most comfortable with the whole matchmaker situation, she very quickly learns how to fight and becomes a strong asset to the army. Now the best thing about this princess is by far her bravery, the fact that she would willingly go to war to take her father's place. It just shows how incredibly deep she is as a character, and she really is to be very admired. Now the worst thing about this character, I'll be completely honest, is that she is a little clumsy. And I know that she has to be in order to distinguish her level of comfort with the whole matchmaker situation versus the army scenes, but I think for somebody who is as skilled at fighting as Mulan is, I don't necessarily think she would be that clumsy in her home life. As for the voice, Mulan is the first princess on today's list that actually has two voice actresses. Her speaking voice is provided by actress Ming-Na Wen, and her singing voice is given to us by Lea Salonga. As for the song, Reflection is absolutely one of the most gorgeous Disney songs ever. Once again, the animation that accompanies it is absolutely wonderful, but it also does a wonderful job of showing Mulan's internal struggle with her place in society. As for the dress, Mulan's dress I is not amongst my favorites. I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but I kind of wish Mulan's official princess look was actually 
her armor. It's her armor where she becomes the most like herself. And placing her in this pretty dress to represent her as a Disney princess sort of backtracks on her character growth. I wish the armor was more featured. And as for her park present, she is sometimes available to meet next to the Town Square Theater, in the little outside veranda, and also in the China Pavilion at Epcot. Are we seeing a running theme with the whole two out of four theme parks? <laughs> Moving on to princess number nine is Merida. Now I would say I have the least in common with Merida because she is the sporty princess, and I am nothing of the sort. <laughs> Merida is our Scottish princess, and she is young, wild, and free. She wants nothing to do with being a princess, and shows us how the title of princess doesn't necessarily mean poised and graceful and elegant, but rather human. Now the best thing about Merida is her willingness to break the rules. In her story, her mother wants to turn her into this prim and proper princess, and she will have none of it. Merida wants to be herself and wants to be free, and she is also the first princess to ever end up without a love interest. Someone give her queen status, please. Now the worst thing about Merida, much like Ariel, is that she is impulsive. She doesn't like what her mother's doing, so she's gonna feed her a cake that she has no idea what's in it and no idea what it's gonna do to her. <laughs> Again, like Ariel, this impulsiveness sort of pays off in the end because she sort of saves her relationship with her mother by transforming her into a bear. Imagine that sentence in any other context. <laughs> As for her voice, Merida is portrayed by Kelly MacDonald, and I think she does an absolutely wonderful job. Kelly gives us the perfect Scottish accent while also remaining understandable, because a lot of American audiences sometimes have trouble understanding certain dialogue when there is a heavy accent involved. As for the song, Merida does not actually sing the song in her movie, but her adventures with archery through the woods are accompanied by Touch the Sky, which I think is an absolutely incredible song all about freedom and wanting to just run and enjoy life without any sort of rules whatsoever. As for her dress, I think Merida's dark teal dress is very beautiful. However, I think with any other hair color or texture, it wouldn't necessarily be as iconic. Merida's hair sort of takes over her look, and so to have a more plain dress actually works in her favor. As for her park present, she is not necessarily one of the most easy princesses to meet. She now sometimes meets behind the old Christmas shop in the Magic Kingdom, and she used to be in the Festival of Fantasy Parade, however, her parade float is, for some reason, no longer in the parade. Here's hoping we can get a little bit more Merida in the parks in the coming years. <laughs> Moving on to number 10 on my list is Jasmine. Now Jasmine is of course the secondary character in her film, Aladdin. Jasmine, much like Aurora, sort of takes a backseat in this film because the film really follows the prince in this case. But regardless, Jasmine was the first Disney princess of color, and she was also the first princess to really stand up and fight for her role in society. She is not a prize to be won, and she will tell you to your face. Now, in my opinion, the best thing about Princess Jasmine is her ability to command a room. At one point, she ends up in a room with her father, the Sultan, Aladdin, and also Jafar, who are all standing around trying to decide her fate. And yet, she is strong enough to speak up and put them all in their place. In all fairness, how dare they? That's her place to decide. Now, the worst thing about Jasmine, I would say, is that, much like Snow White, she's a little too trusting, mainly because I have a really big problem with the amount that Aladdin lies to Jasmine in their movie. And so when it comes down to it, I would say the worst thing about her is that she doesn't necessarily shake her finger at Aladdin as much. He shouldn't necessarily have lied to her in the first place, but if he did, he should have had to work hard in order to win her heart back. Which I guess you could say he does in the final battle but I need a worse thing on this list. <laughs> As for her voice, Princess Jasmine was voice acted by two different actresses. Her speaking voice was given by Linda Larkin, and her singing voice was given by Leia Salonga. Let's give it up for Leia Salonga, the only lady on this list to voice act two Disney princesses. Jasmine, of course, sings A Whole New World with Prince Aladdin, the iconic scene on the magic carpet, one of the best in the whole film. As for her dress, or outfit, because it's not really a dress. In the movie, it's not necessarily my favorite, only because it's not very culturally accurate. I actually much prefer her outfit in the Disney parks. I love the sort of flowing little see-through sleeves and the slick back hair. I think it's an absolutely beautiful look. But I will say, the light teal is a great color on her. 
And as for her park presence, Princess Jasmine is available to meet at Adventureland in the Magic Kingdom, and also in the Morocco Pavilion at Epcot. Moving on to princess number 11 is Raya from Raya and the Last Dragon. Now Raya is the newest addition to the Disney princess lineup, and she is the big adventure princess. I feel like she's probably the least known of the Disney princesses because she's the newest, and her movie wasn't necessarily the biggest because it came out on Disney Plus during COVID, but she really is a strong presence in the Disney princess lineup. Now the best thing about this princess is her ability to bring people together. What I love more than anything is that the villain in this story, of course, Namari, ends up coming together with the band of heroes in order to save the day. And it's Raya's investment in believing and trusting, of course, with the guidance of Sisu, that she's able to accomplish this. Now the worst thing about Raya is she doesn't sing. <laughs> That's pretty much it, is that we really don't have an iconic song to associate with Raya. So when there are big nighttime spectaculars at Disney, they often compile the music from all of the famous Disney movies, but Raya and The Last Dragon really kind of gets left out because there's not really an iconic song. As for the voice, Raya is of course voice acted by actress Kelly Marie Tran. And what's so fun about this voice acting performance is it was given to us from her very own home. This movie of course was created during COVID times and so she recorded the part of Raya from her own home in a self-made studio. It's just such a great story to say that I voiced a Disney princess from my house. <laughs> As for the song, there is none. But as for the dress, Raya doesn't wear a dress, but yet I absolutely love her outfit. The really long cape with the beautiful hat it just creates such a different silhouette from every other princess, and it distinguishes her as the adventurous one. And as for her park presence, she really only appears in the cavalcade at the Magic Kingdom. But again, here's hoping that we one day get to meet Raya at an official meet and greet. Moving on to princess number 12 is Pocahontas. Pocahontas is a fierce leader. She is wise beyond her years, and she holds her place as a very powerful princess. Now for the best thing about this princess is I would definitely say her music. Pocahontas has two songs in her film, and they are... Who? Incredible. Some of the best Disney music, for sure able to make a top 10 list. Now the worst thing about this princess is lack of cultural accuracy when it comes to her film. The real Pocahontas, of course, was named Matoaka, and she lived a vastly more difficult life than the princess we see on screen. There was no romance with John Smith, but the one thing this film does get right is that there wasn't necessarily a happy ending with Pocahontas. And I think that's what also helps her stand out, is that not every story ends in happily ever after. Now as for the voice, Pocahontas is the other princess that is performed by two different actresses. Her speaking voice was provided by Irene Bernard, and her singing voice was fabulously done by Judy Kuhn. Pocahontas again has two songs in her film, Just Around the Riverbend and Colors of the Wind, and they are just sweeping, big, and beautiful. As for her dress, it's not necessarily my favorite, again, just for cultural accuracy reasons, but I do love her necklace and the story about how it belonged to her mother. That's probably my favorite part of her outfit. And as for her park presence, she really only can be seen in the animal kingdom on the floating barges if you're walking by some of the rivers in the park. She often waves to crowds with Miko. Moving on to princess number 13 is Cinderella. Now, I really love Cinderella. It's just my personal opinion that she doesn't make as much of a bang in her movie as a lot of the other princesses do. But regardless, she was Walt's favorite princess and she holds the honor of being Walt's favorite piece of animation with the dress transformation. As for the best thing, I think the best thing about Cinderella is that a lot of people see themselves in her with the whole rags to riches arc. A lot of people dream of the life that Cinderella had, coming from very little and all of a sudden being plucked out of a crowd and having this big lavish life. It's really fun to place yourself in Cinderella's place. As for the worst thing, I would say I do wish there was a little bit more of a resolution between her and her stepmother and her stepsisters. She sort of doesn't get this moment where she can look at them and be like, are you sorry for what you did? She does in the live action, but that one doesn't really count on this list. Cinderella was voiced by actress Eileen Woods. Her voice is one of the most quintessential storybook voices. It's absolutely beautiful. And once again, the transatlantic accent that was used just makes this sound absolutely timeless. As for her song, A Dream Is Wish Your Heart Makes is absolutely gorgeous. And so This Is Love is quite a pretty duet between her and the prince. As for her dress, I love this dress so much. Wish it was more often marketed as silver, which is the true color in the movie, as opposed to blue. But besides that, I have 
have nothing really bad to say. It's quite beautiful. And for her park presence, Cinderella is in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade, and she is also always available to meet and greet at the Princess Fairy Tale Hall. At number 14 on my list is Rapunzel. I know I often place Rapunzel very, very low, but believe me, even number 15 on this list is an S tier character. I love the, all of the princesses. And we all gravitate towards some more than others, so if you gravitate towards Rapunzel, absolutely wonderful, and tell me why in the comments. Now the best thing about Rapunzel is her wide-eyed wonder. She wants to get out in the world and see everything that she's missed ever since she was little. She, also like Snow White, is really able to make others around her help her and root for her in her journey. Think about I've Got a Dream. Those don't necessarily seem like people that would gravitate towards a Disney princess. Princess, yet they all encourage her to go after her dream and are willing to share theirs with her. Now the worst thing I would say is that Rapunzel is sort of the epitome of the clumsy princess. Disney in recent years has sort of had this issue with the clumsy characters and I really feel like that started with Rapunzel. She's definitely not the most clumsy, but it started with her. And she also started the trend of non-2D animated princesses, which kind of makes me sad. Rapunzel is of course beautifully voiced by Mandy Moore. Her songs include When Will My Life Begin, I've Got a Dream, and my personal favorite, I See the Light. I See the Light is probably the most beautifully animated out of all of them. I love this song. As for her dress, Rapunzel is probably my least favorite of the princess dresses. I just don't love the silhouette of her dress, and I wish she had a more iconic look for the end of her film. I don't even mind the short hair on her, I just wish she had a different silhouette of a dress. And as for her park presence, she is in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade, and she is available to meet in the Princess Fairy Tale Hall. And last but not least, on my list of favorite Disney princesses is Princess Anna, or Queen Anna, from Frozen. Now again, if you love this princess, I think that is absolutely wonderful. She's just the one that I gravitate towards the least. But again, what makes her such a beloved character is your love for her. What I love so much about Anna is that she is just so bubbly and optimistic. She is a helping hand wherever she is, and she always has other people's best interests in mind. As for the best thing about Anna is that she can make you feel like a hundred bucks, no matter if you're having the worst day or the best. She brings a light into every room that she enters, and I think that's a really special quality to have. As for the worst thing, I would probably say once again, clumsiness. Clumsy isn't necessarily a bad trait, it's just I feel like it's a little bit overdone. Clumsy for a laugh is different than regular clumsy. Anna is of course voiced by Kristen Bell, absolutely gorgeous. I love Kristen Bell's singing voice. Oh my god, gorgeous. Her songs include For the First Time in Forever, Love is an Open Door, and The Next Right Thing. And her dresses definitely aren't bad, they're just not my favorite amongst the princess lineup. And as for her park presence, she is in the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade, and she is always available to meet and greet over in the Norway Pavilion with her sister Elsa in Epcot. And with that, we have reached the end of the list of favorite Disney princesses. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe so you never miss magic from me. You can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, stay magical.